Hello everyone, the Retro Dev here, and welcome to installing FreeDOS 1.3 inside of DOSBox. So before we get started, we're going to need a couple of different things. We're going to need FreeDOS. We're obviously going to need DOSBox staging. Uh, we're not going to be using regular uh, DOSBox. Uh, you're welcome to use it. I'm not going to be using it, so if it doesn't work, I've, I've never tested it. Um, the other thing you will need is 7-Zip, which for Linux users, you can grab through whatever your package manager happens to be. But if you're on Windows, I went on ahead and provided a link in the description for grabbing 7-Zip, and it makes extracting the IMG file extremely easy. Okay, so first we're gonna grab FreeDOS. So we wanna grab the full USB version. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna grab DOSBox staging and Grab it for whichever version you have. For the Windows version, it's just a zip file. You just extract it somewhere and then you can run it. Uh, for the Linux version, you can either grab the FlatHub, the Snap, you can grab it through your package manager. And I think there's also just a tar.gz version. Um, I'm using the FlatHub version. I highly recommend you use the latest version if possible, in particular, at least 0 0.78. And the reason for that is, uh, 0 0.78 added networking support proper like TCP IP networking so Ethernet and you can actually literally browse the web through DOSBox I'm not saying it's like the best idea but you can totally do it um, and then the next thing is you're going to need to know where your configuration file is so there is in the description as I said there's links to all this stuff and you can grab the it'll tell you the path of wherever the DOSBox configuration file. DOSBox staging uses the exact same paths as regular DOSBox. So this wiki will be almost one to one. Although the configuration file does have a bunch of extra stuff in it, it's still compatible as far as most things go. Okay, so once we have DOSBox, yeah, and this right here is inside of inside of FlatHub, it's inside of the Darfar folder app io.github.dosbox staging config dosbox. So once we have it, we're just going to extract the IMG file. And I'm just going to open up a terminal. And then I am just going to do 7zx fd13 full.img and I'm going to hit enter. And it will just extract everything out. Probably should have put it, you know, literally into a folder but I'll, I'll do that really quick um just dump everything in there okay perfect okay so now we have our folder and we know it's in our home directory and downloads and if you're on windows again any other place you just need to know the path whatever this folder is um i don't need this in here though that can go back to download get out 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 yeah, okay, it's all there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and launch DOSBox at least once. Uh, I don't need to do it because I already have DOSBox set up and it's set up to my old free DOS 1.2. And we're just going to close it and we'll go on ahead and just navigate to wherever your configuration file is. And just open it up in any editor you want, Visual Studio Code, Notepad, pretty much anything Read the text file. The other thing you want to do is you want to make a folder somewhere on your hard drive or one of your hard drives uh, for where you wanna actually, quote unquote, store your uh, FreeDOS uh, directory, your folder. Uh, this is basically gonna be, the folders is gonna be your hard drive, you can put files into it, you can read files. It's it's quite useful for DOS development actually because it's very easy to just move stuff around using modern stuff. Okay, and I already made one in my free DOS directory where I keep everything called YT DOS for YouTube DOS so I can use it for all of the tutorial videos to come. So when we first launch it, there's a lot of different options in here and I implore you to read through, they've commented and documented it very, very well and for the most part, it's fairly self-explanatory. But there are a couple different changes. Uh, I always set Windows resolution to large relative to whatever my screen resolution happens to be. Um, 
but you can leave it at default or whatever the default is. But one thing you do want to change is VSync. I set that to true. Uh, this is just to help prevent any, you know, screen tearing or any other issues. And for output, I prefer OpenGL NB, which stands for no bilinear filtering, because by default, it's set to OpenGL, which does bilinear filtering, which is horrible for DOS games because it the bilinear filtering blurs out and is great for modern 3D, although I would prefer anastropic, but a totally different thing. Uh, we're not going to get into that. Um, but bilinear just tends to just muck with the colors and the general look, and it doesn't make it look how it should. So I always set it to non-binary. There is also this OpenGL PP, which stands for pixel perfect, and you can set it to that. And then everything else here, you can pretty much leave alone. Uh, sensitivity right here is fairly useful. Um, I'd set it to 90 because by default, it's just way too fast inside of DOS. I tried 80, but it was too slow. Uh, so set this as you like. Then we're going to scroll down. And the next category is DOSBox. And inside of here, you can change the memory size and the VESA modes, which for some bizarre reason, mine is set to eight. And I have no earthly. I think I went to change something and change the wrong thing. Interesting point though, I haven't actually noticed any issues uh, at, like, at all. Um, I'm gonna set this to all. And then I'm gonna set the V memory size to eight, which is eight megabytes. And for memory size, I typically set it to 64. Um, in particular, if you're gonna play Daggerfall, you need at least 32 in order for it to work properly. Uh, I haven't come into any issues where 64 megabytes has actually been an issue for me personally. The next thing is render. So here's where you can set like quite a bit of different things like frame skipping, I, I highly recommend touch that ever just set it to zero uh aspect always leave aspect ratio to true um unless you want things to stretch i don't really understand why but if you would want it sure i guess at the monochrome palette this is if you're using cga or hercules mode there's a couple different options uh i just leave it at default because i rarely if ever use cga mode uh which you would set um where would you set that actually I think you, I can't actually remember where you set the mode for that. Ah, there it is. Yes, machine. It's up here in DOSBox under machine. Uh, right now it's set to SVJ S3. You would set it to SGA or SGA. Uh, you can also set it to Hercules, I believe. No, actually, I think you just set it to CGA and then it just, you know, work. But we just leave it to default since it's the most compatible and it works quite well. Actually, I don't even believe this card ever actually came in an eight megabyte version, but since it doesn't complain I'm with it, um, I think it, I think it comes in a four megabyte size it ever came. So moving on, you can also set your scalers. There's a bunch of different ones. Feel free to play around and look up online what they do. Uh, I always leave it to no, or you can use normal three X. The reason for this is, I like things to look natural or as close to natural as humanly possible. Uh, so I don't uh, I don't use any of the other scalers. Uh, the GL shader, I will sometimes use this one right here. Uh, CRT easy mode flat. I, I find that it produces a somewhat accurate CRT look uh, without really messing up things. Uh, fake lots really, really messes up when you upload a video to YouTube, uh, though I do find it looks really nice. Um, one thing to point, if you use this GLS shader, uh, you can't maximize the window. You can still full screen it with alt tab, or sorry, alt enter, uh, but you can't, uh, can't maximize at a fixed window. Next is composite. Not going to bother with it. That's for like CGA, PC junior, that sort of stuff. For CPU, uh, I pretty much leave everything at default at auto. The only thing I do change is the cycles. Uh, I always fix it to a set number of cycles and I use 61,000 because it's similar to the number of cycles of my actual DOS machine, which is an AM 5X86. Um, and there's a couple different, uh, um, th there, there's a couple different, uh, the word I'm looking for here eludes me for some reason. I, there, there's a couple different, um, I'll upload a, actually, you know what? I'll just upload a, 
not a text file, but I'll link to a portion on my website where I'll actually cover like the different cycles for the different tiers of processors that existed uh, during the DOS era and onwards. Um, but 61,000 is kind of like 150 megahertz, 486 roughly, give or take. Uh, for Mixer, we'll just leave that alone. And for MIDI, this is where you can set up MIDI. So if you don't know MIDI music, uh, like the Roland and so forth, um, if you have the ROMs, you can set it to MT32 or even auto. Uh, I just use FluidSense since I have plenty of processing power to spare, and I find that it just works. And I have my own sound font, which you would set down here if you're using FluidSynth. And by default, it does use the default directory. And if you have the ROMs, you can put them here. And if you have any extra shaders, put those in there. Um, I already have one, so I just put it to use that. You could use the default. Uh, if you're on Windows, Windows has a fairly accurate uh, general MIDI sound font. Uh, Linux did not, for whatever strange reason. Uh, so I was able to get my own Roland sound font. And then this is the same thing. I just set up the directory and set the, auto, the model to auto. This is not used when you use FluidSynth. So you can just skip this. And then for Sound Blaster, you can pick the different version. The best, as far as the support here, just leave it on Sound Blaster 16 and just leave all this stuff to default. Um, but if you ever install a game and you need to know these IRQ DMA or HDMA channels, they're right here in configuration. Uh, for the Gus, is for the Gravis Ultrasound. I do have it enabled and it does work on some games. Some games it doesn't because magic, I suppose. Uh, this is Innovation, which was the SID chip from the Commodore. I just leave this alone because I don't know of any game that actually uses it. Uh, PC speaker, again, leave it alone. Joystick, I leave it alone. You can come in here and change all this stuff if you need to. Uh, for Serial, this is for you know multiplayer and stuff. I have mine set so that I can connect to my BBS from my DOS box. We'll cover this in a later tutorial. You can just completely skip this for now. Uh, for DOS, you can skip this. Uh, and this is a good point to mention where I will have another video where I will cover uh, using DOS boxes built in quote unquote DOS features. And you actually don't need to install free DOS and you can take it some advantage of certain things like DOS 7.1, which has long file name support among other things. Um, but again, we're using free DOS, so we're just going to ignore this section. Uh, you can go ahead and flag IPX on for true if you ever plan to do any form of networking or anything like that. For Ethernet, we're just going to skip it. And now we finally get to the most important part, which is the auto exec line. And this runs when you launch um, DOSBox. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say mount C. And then we need to know our path, which in my case is on a storage drive and it's on free dos and it's called dos and the free size this this just tells uh dos box how big the drive is it really doesn't matter to be fair um certain games will break if the drive is too big so don't make it like an eight gig drive or something uh, but you can have the drive like for example my dos is like something like 12 gig DOSBox doesn't care at all. So this is mostly just to tell it how big the hard drive is. And I don't recommend you make it any bigger than this for that reason. And then immediately after that, we want it to go into uh, C. And then we just want it to run fdauto.bat. Now, you'll notice down here I have autoexec.bat. That's because in FreeDOS 1.3, they changed it away from autoexec to fdauto. Uh, so it no longer has an auto exec dot bat. It is now called FD auto and it functions literally the same. Okay. So if we launch our DOS box now, you will notice that it says illegal command because work because we haven't installed anything yet, but the drive is successfully mounted. So now what we want to do is we want to mount our uh, folder where we extracted our free DOS. And again, this is just relatively simple. You just need to know the path. Uh, in my case, it is in my home folder, my downloads, and a folder called DOS. So we'll just do downloads, and then we'll call FDOS. 
Oh, my bad. The mount command obviously, of course, needs to be, we're gonna assign it to drive D. So then we'll just go into D and we'll do LS, which is a feature of DOSBox. Um, on, if you're installing this on an actual DOS machine, you would have to do either dir or forward slash W. And now all we have to do, now that you should can see everything's here, we'll just do setup. What is our preferred language? Pick your preferred language, my English. We'll continue with the installation. I'm gonna gather some information here, with our keyboard layout. Now, this next part is very, very important. You may do anything you like from this point on. Um, you may install it with the sources, without the sources, the full installation or the non-full installation. I am doing the plain DOS system. And the reason for this is I don't want all the extra games and I don't want all the extra applications. And there's a tool inside of FreeDOS called FDimples. With this drive mounted, we can just run FDimples whenever we want. And we'll see that in just a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll show, I will show off FDimples. So all we have to do now is do a plain DOS system. And we just hit enter. Please install FreeDOS. Give it just a minute here, and it'll just quickly roll right through. Depending on how many cycles you have, depends on how fast this. Believe me, if you have this at 3,000, this will take a little. Um, but at 61,000 cycles, it goes relatively quickly. Okay, now it tells us we can reboot. Um, I'm not going to bother rebooting. Uh, uh, right, let me run FD Auto here. Okay, and this is it working. I think it installs Dimples. Yes, okay, perfect. So I, we're in DOSBox, we don't actually have to reboot. Um, and after running FD Auto, it will run uh, Dimples, which basically this is just its package manager. It's the that's literally all it is. There's there's a there's a lot of different stuff on here. Um, there's also a bunch more on the website. There's not really very much on here. I'm kind of surprised, but we could always mount the. Uh, I'm actually very surprised. What on earth? It has really have very many of the. Uh, compilers or anything that's interesting it's probably because uh, it extracted i could we could mount the literal image at this point and uh that would probably work much much better but you can go ahead and grab some stuff uh whatever you like uh you can also i'll put a link in the description you can also just grab stuff manually which is usually what i do because i don't it creates like source folders and a bunch of other stuff i don't need any of that i just organize it myself and you have to set up the configuration into FD Auto anyway, so eh. But all this stuff is here, and you're welcome to use it. I'm just going to escape. Okay, so I'm going to give them back my mouth. Okay, there we go. All right, so now what we're going to do right before we end this video is we're just going to relaunch DOSBox and make sure everything's working. And it is. There we go. Uh, we have... Successfully installed FreeDOS 1.3 into DOSBox. It was relatively simple, and if you already knew, skipped the part where I explained the DOSBox configuration, you're good. Okay, so enjoy having a working FreeDOS inside of DOSBox every time you launch it. And now you can start installing programs, applications. Be sure to check the wiki, the DOSBox wiki on how to like mount image files, floppies, and so forth, uh, all of which is extremely useful. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like this channel and want to support it, uh, you can find me over on Locals as well. If you need support on this video, like if you run into any problems, there's a forum link down below. Please check the forum link and post there. It's much easier to work there than it is inside of YouTube's comment section. Notoriously atrocious. And I will see you all in the next one.